in 2005, he moved from head of corporate communications from First Run Bank to open up Vuma. What, why did you make the move exactly at that time? I was actually head of communications at FNB. You know, when I took the transition and took some time out, it was a very important part of my life. I started looking at the age of 39 and I started looking around me at what I'd personally done and what I'd personally achieved. And all I kept saying to myself was, is this it? Is this it? And in my heart, I wasn't happy. In myself, I wasn't happy. And a lot of people said, well, but you need you at the, you know, at the, at the pinnacle of your career. And I thought about, that is just crazy. How can I be at the pinnacle at my, of my career at the age of 39 and what I was doing? So I needed to migrate and take some time out for myself to literally understand myself better and learn more about who I am as an individual. I put in my resignation and I had a three months notice period. And um, I think up until the last day that I left the office, they still didn't believe that I was taking off. It was, you know, are you crazy? Um, what are you doing? And I, but in myself, I knew I had to do this. So I didn't know how much time. So I sold everything. Um, I gave away everything I had and I sold everything. I kept my car. Um, and I really wanted to go and spend two years in Tibet. That was my, that really was what I wanted to do. Um, and I had a spiritual teacher at the time, a lady called Shiru Mamadevi. And she said to me, you're not going to Tibet. Well, little did I know that a couple of months notice, a couple of months later, quite a few riots and that type of thing broke out in Tibet. So I said, well, could I go down to Nazda? My mom had just passed away and I just needed to have some quiet. So I went down to Sedgefield and I got a little job and I literally disappeared. Um, that period of time took me 11 months. Um, and on the 11th month, I sat up bolt upright in bed and knew that I had to open up a reputation management company. Please explain to me why would a company need a reputation management agency like yours? Well, I think Grizzle, it also goes right back to what is reputation management. It's not only crisis, you don't need a reputation management company when you're in a crisis. Reputation management really encompasses all the business aspects that requires communication. So for example, you need communications to make sure that your marketing and advertising has been done in the most appropriate manner from a brand point of view. You need to look at your risks and identify the risks, both in a corporate as well as in an organization, as well as an NGO, and of course not forgetting a country, that's as big as it is. And then you've got to look at your continuity plans. So in your continuity plans, we start to look at sustainability. Who are our stakeholders? Who are the people that look at us and we are influenced by them? We need to make sure we're communicating with those people effectively and that's what we mean by reputation management right through an organisation, making sure that ethics and corporate governance is adhered to at all times. We are starting to find PR, marketing, digital people starting to talk about reputation management, but it's being skewed. And I do believe it's as a reputation management company, it's our role to play a very important role in making sure that we put that record straight. What is reputation management actually? It's not PR and steroids. It is really about encompassing everything in business and getting the communications through in a specific arena. If you um, take a leadership of a company, a CEO or, or any or government or um, any leader of an organisation, right. how can they use reputation management to, to, um, uh, to achieve the organisation's bottom line? You know, one of the key things about being proactive, and I think what happens to a lot of people as we go through organisations and we learn business skills, we get to a stage where we start um, expecting everybody else to do certain things. So, for example, often communications gets pocketed into the communications department. But as we can see, the world is changing at such a rapid rate that if we look at our strikes, we look at the employees that are on social media, we look at all the diversities that businesses are now faced with, we weren't faced with these 10 years ago, but we're now faced with it in a reality form, that the CEOs and the boards have got to be a lot more understanding right through the organisation. So you need to be proactive in understanding social media. You need to not just say, oh, well, it's the role of communications department. It needs to be adhered to and, and adopted right at board level to ensure that you understand all the communications tools being used in the various departments within an organisation and being proactive, not reactive. It's not done overnight. That, that's, that's the simplicity of it. Um, it it's, a, it's a process that you start with an organisation. Sometimes we'll start with an organisation and they really don't um, grasp the concept of reputation management. They'll say, can you just do our PR for us? We'll say, absolutely. Because we know that in a period of time, it will grow. 
So we accept that the market is, it's a new market, it's a new understanding, it's a new teaching in the marketing communications field and also from a board level point of view. So we, we find that we will get into a company and we'll start as PR sometimes. The other times we'll get into a company when the, it's a crisis and sometimes the crisis brings the client closer to you in a, in a shorter period of time. So you often find a crisis results in the best turnarounds and then your PR clients will take a longer period of time to migrate into reputation management. But ultimately, we find once they are a client of ours, we migrate into that level and in and, and a, and a higher level of thinking of identifying risks, doing scenario planning, preparing for eventualities so that we are leading the client into a direction of proactivity in the marketplace. How different is a reputation management um, approach? for an individual than that of an organization, organization and also between organization and government or a country. How differ? Uh, how different are they? You know, we've handled a family situation, for example. Um, a very well-known situation that, that people know in the marketplace, the Oscar Pistorius particular situation. A very, very sad accident that's taken place and we were brought in after the first four weeks. The family dynamics was very important for us to begin to understand and to earn their trust very quickly. Um, we find that when you deal with a family, there's a lot more complexities and unknowns that you're dealing with. When you're dealing with a corporate, you're dealing with a fairly structured environment because ethics and corporate governance is a standard adherence in, an, in a listed or a non-listed company. And then, of course, when you're dealing with a country, you're dealing with the complexity and the diversity of a country. So you, it's to understand those little nuances. I think you've got to have a, a high level of EQ. You can, you can have a brilliant brain and have, you know, you could understand everything and have an IQ level of 171 or whatever it might be, but you've got to be able to transport that into an EQ and read the nuances in the various situations that you're faced with. The whole issue around South Africa, we need to start looking after our own reputation is very important. Um, the factual correctness of media reporting is of paramount importance. Um, yes, you have to sell a newspaper. Yes, you have to sell advertising around radio and television. There's no doubt that that's how the world works. And yes, the media industry is going through a particular tenuous time with finance. We're all aware of that. We can see how people are cutting back on budgets and on, on reporters and journalism. We accept that. But what is crucial is responsible reporting. Because what has happened is now the media themselves are becoming spokespeople for specific situations. And as long as you are a spokesperson, make sure you understand the responsibility that you are carrying with that. It's an honor to be a spokesperson for a specific topic or a country or, or a company. Make sure you truly understand the gravitas and the responsibility that comes with it. What advice have you got for somebody that finds them all of a sudden in a crisis situation? What do they do? You know, the first thing to do. I, I personally, I think, having, having been through quite a number of crisis situations myself, I find that even when we are dealing with crisis situations with specific clients, we also have to end up managing our own personal crisis situation. And I think what, what I've always said, in fact, I've also said at a couple of conferences, uh, be very, very cautious about jumping into the gutter. It's so easy for people to name and shame and blame. It's so easy, incredibly easy. But I personally believe by going within and maintaining the high ground, looking at the situation, almost like a helicopter overview, looking at it, being systematic, create the scenarios and really speak from the heart. Be authentic, be real, be honest is the most important thing. What skills do you use? Let's take, for instance, a company who's got a crisis at the moment. And um, what skills do you personally or the company use to get them out of that situation? The, the one thing is, is to be cool, calm and collective. So we need to be very disciplined. In a crisis, it, it, it's, it's, it's really it's tough at times because it's like herding cats. Um, but, but it's about reading the, the, the format in a particular crisis. Yes, we have templates and yes, we have models that we work within, but every single crisis situation is so unique. So it is about being incredibly disciplined, identifying who the spokespeople are, identifying what the current situation is, making sure that all the other nuances of the other stakeholders have been taken into consideration. So if, for example, a, uh, a school is closing down, who is it going to affect? If someone is knocked over in a, uh, in a car accident, 
who is it going to affect? What are the ramifications of what's actually taken place? And we've got to bear that into consideration. And, and be sensitive with the specific issue. Be coherent, but be sensitive. Listen to the issues. So often what happens in communication world is we're telling people what to do. Our format is very much listen.